The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger of Round the OAA, one of the hosts of Last Three Brain Cells and the host of Between Taramina's and Orange Radio Television. Like to welcome those hearing us on a local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. A lot to look at this week, obviously. Of course, um, very exciting week three um, of the football season. We're up, getting ready into week four, which is going to be really interesting. Some very interesting games to keep an eye on um, heading into this week. Um, what's recap week three? Um, I want to see where everybody's at heading into the um, heading into week four. Um, when you look at the divisions and I'm looking at right now, when you look at the gold this year, um, the biggest, ma- I mean, like the gold to me is the, um, is a, is a mess right now. I mean, you look at the record. I mean, the best team in that division is one and two right now. And right now there's three teams in this division that are one and two. And there's Avondale, um, Berkeley's one and two and, um, Ferndale's one and two. I mean, Ferndale just knocked off Royal Oak, um, in a, um, and a good one, 22-21. Um, and I thought Ferndale would roll in that game. Um, but give credit Coach Justin Truett and Royal Oak, I mean, like, for the way that they played. I mean, they played a heck of a game. I mean, really did. Um, and then you look at Berkeley. I mean, Berkeley's case, obviously. I mean, like, when you look at the Bears, yes, they knocked off Pontiac 48-28 um, at Hurley. But I still think there's some concerns with Berkeley. And there's a few reasons why I think that. The 28 points against Pontiac, that is a um, little bit high. Their defense has been a problem spot for them. Um, I think they really have to shore this up, especially on the defense side of the ball. Um, When I look at, of course, the um, I think for Berkeley, you know, if they can get the some things fixed and some things corrected. Um, you know, as I said last week, um, the 48 points, now, yes, it's against Pontiac, um, but they've got to, I, I, to me, I, I just don't think something's right with Berkeley. I just don't think that, you know, when you look at the Bears, I mean, like, something's not right with them, and that is a very difficult scenario when you look at the Bears. I mean, it's a tough spot. Really is. Um, and then there's Avondale. I mean, Avondale, to me, it looks like with them, um, you know, they lost. Um, they gave up 63 points to Seaholm. That's the second time in the last three years that they've given up 63 to them. Um, I know back in 2019, that was 63-31. I remember that run for Seaholm when they went into the, um, when they made the postseason, they made that, um, Trip the Division Two State Semifinals. They had a knock off. Um, they had a knock off Avondale just to get in the playoffs, and you know, and they made that run. So when you look at Avondale, I mean, the first game against Warren Cousin, where they looked really good. I mean, like I thought that they would, you know, turn things around. Um, off to a good start, you know, and then when they were in the, ran into Holly. It was a heck of a game, um, very competitive game, where it was a tough loss for them. And then last week against Seaholm, where they just they just did not look good at all. I mean, defensively. I mean, I get when you're playing against a team that runs severe and all that, but still, if you're Coach Corey Bell in that defense, that's absolutely inexcusable. That's just absolutely anemic, you know, the fact that you gave up 63 points, that's inexcusable. Um, and then when you look at the other two teams in the um, gold division, you got um, Royal Oak. I thought Royal Oak played much better against Ferndale than the last two weeks where they were outscored 93 nothing. Um, Makai Jenkins had a nice game. Um, Hudson Seidel had a nice game. But, you know, when I recap Pont- Royal Oak's situation, um, I think the Ravens are a team that, you know, they're just... I, they're right there. I mean, now Truett said a couple weeks ago that they were right there when they were 
when they lost to Farmington. I didn't buy that comment. Now, against Ferndale, if he would have said it a week later, I would I, I completely believe it. So, that's my take on Royal Oak. And then with Pontiac, um, you really look at the Phoenix, um, 28 points, it's better than previously what they've scored the last two weeks. Um, they've scored 18 points prior to, and then they're adding the 28 points against Berkeley. That's a big deal. So Pontiac right now, to me, looks like they're on the way up, even though they gave up 48, which was the most um, they've allowed all season. Um, so when you really look at this division, um, to me, when you look at the gold, it is a complete, complete mess to figure this division out. I mean, even with your with, with the best team right now in the division at one and two, and you know, and that that's mind boggling. And everybody's playing everybody, with the exception of the gold a gold team playing a blue team. Of course, this week that's Ferndale taking on Troy. Um, and for Ferndale, you know, when I look at the who who I think right now is the best team in this division, um, people have said, is it? I still think when I look at this division on paper, I mean, people are saying, well, Avondale, yes, Avondale's got a case. But to me, when I look at the division right now, I still think, I think the best team in this division, honestly, is Ferndale. Because you look at their games. I mean, they lost by one to Macomb Lance Cruz. Lance Cruz. They lost by one point, 27-26. They were right there in that game. Um, they survived Royal Oak last week, um, winning that one 22-21. And then you kind of want to give a pass to Gra- in that game against Grand Rapids West Catholic where they were just completely blown out 43 nothing. So when I look at the gold division, to me the best team in this division looks to be Ferndale because of the proven experience they got. and But they just haven't been able to you know, it looks like they put the game away. Um, they had to survive that game, but I know that Ferndale's had issues with Royal Oak in the past. Um, but it looks like Royal Oak is starting to turn things around, um, which is a good sign for them. Um, Berkeley, it's hard for me to trust them right now, um, especially with the quarterback situation. Um, now, yes, they bounced back against Pontiac, but, you know, I'm not going to say that, you know, that, you know, it's Pontiac and all that, but I'm not going to say that because Pontiac's got some good playmakers. I mean, Kanye Donaldson, you got Davian Hall there. Um, but Pontiac did put up 28 points, and that has to be a concern going forward if you're Coach Sean Shields. Um, Avondale, you know, when you look at them, obviously Tyler Herzog, a quarterback. Um, there is some concern when I look at um, Avondale, I mean, like, especially on the defense side of the ball, um, they just haven't looked really good. I mean, like, in the last two weeks, and then you're playing against a team that runs a veer um, and see home, you know, 63 points is too much. So, in all honesty, you know, I mean, I was really surprised that see home put up 63 on Avondale. I mean, like, that to me was one of the most unique. I mean, like, what happened that game. Um, So, that's something to really look at. Um, Yeah, so, basically, in the goal, it's a mess right now. Um, Right now, trying to dissect this division. um, I think the best team in this division looks to be Ferndale. Um, I mean, Avondale, I would say, is the next best team. Then it's Berkeley. Then Royal Oak. Then Pontiac. But... You know, I'm curious to see how Ferndale does this week against Troy. Um, I think they got a shot at him. I think they got a good chance to beat him. I mean, so we'll see. I mean, I'll do my projections in a little bit here. Um, but when I look at the goal, it's a, it's a complete mess. I mean, like, and that's something that got to figure out. Um, let's look at now from the gold division. Let's go to that division to the blue. Um, when I look at the blue... Um, I think it's starting to get clear and clear who the best team is. And I think it's Seahome. Um with the way they played against Avondale, they're putting up the 63 points. It's a big statement there. 
Um, I also got to look at, obviously, um, you know, the play of the Kinney brothers. Um, they have been very outstanding for Seaholm. They, I mean, they've really have, um, they've been the key catalyst to leading this team, to leading this, um, you know, when I look at Seaholm, um, right now, and I, I, to me, they look like the best team in this league. I mean, yes, they got that statement win against UD Jesuit. That is a big time statement win. Um, they had a, um, good win earlier in the year as well in week one. Um, you know, knocking off Bloomfield Hills, 38-21. I mean, they've beaten a white team. They've beaten a Catholic League team. And now they're rolling in the blue right now. So, Seahorn to me looks the part. I mean, they I mean, like they have been really impressive um, the way they've been playing. Um, defensively, they've been doing just enough. I think the 29 points they gave up was a little too high. Um, but clearly, Seahorn does deserve my attention. They are a, they're very solid. They're very formidable. Um, probably the game of the week in the blue was North Farmington. No, sorry, it was Farmington and um, Troy Athens. This was a shock for me. I didn't expect, um, I didn't expect Farmington to go into Troy and win 28-14. Um, Dominic Peschel had a big game. Cam Penaway had a big game. Um, it went back and forth, um, but end of the day, Farmington pulled away. And it was a big win for Farmington because, you know, considering what she got this week um, with the Farmington Cup on the line, um, I was shocked how they shut down Troy Athens' attack. Now, a lot of that with Troy Athens, you got to look at um, Nick Asher. I mean, obviously, he's been playing really, really well for Troy Athens in this stretch. I mean, like, he's really been the catalyst of the red. I mean, like, for this early start for Troy Athens against um, Berkeley and Frazier, but, you know, you got to give Farmington a lot of credit in that game against Athens. Um, just for really, you know, just for really shutting down, um, you know, you know, the um, Troy Athens attack, I was really surprised that, you know, that the Farmington defense came through, especially, to me, Farmington, in my opinion, should be a 3-0 and team. But they're not. They're two and one. They had that bad loss week one to Ypsilanti Lincoln on their home field. Um, but when I look at Farmington, to me, I think they're the second best team right now in the blue. And that says a lot. Um, on the flip side with Troy Athens, um, you know, they got to find more playmakers. I mean, if you coach Tom Cook, you got to find more playmakers. I mean, you, your line is solid. You got a very good, um, you know, I think it's going to come down to can they find more playmakers? That's what I view with Troy Athens. Um, we'll see what happens to them going forward there in that one. Um, and then we had North Farmington taking on Troy. Um, this was a 9 nothing game. Um, North Farmington won that game. They snapped an eight-game losing streak. Um, they were down their third-string quarterback, Mill Coleman. Um, he, I thought he played all right. I mean, I'll be honest with you, he made some Good catches, uh, good throws. Um, he did a lot of running, of course. You know, he's a wide receiver by trade. Um, I thought that um, the North Farmington defense really shut Troy's offense down. Um, you know, and then, of course, they had that big um, that big touchdown in the second quarter that gave him a 6 nothing lead, um, which was a big deal. But then they missed the field goal. I think they had the field goal blocked, and then... They kicked the field goal in the third quarter, go up nine nothing, and that was your basically your ball game there. Um, for North Farmington, to me, is they need their quarterbacks healthy. I mean, Tom Belozic and um, especially Ryan Shelby. Of course, Belozic, of course, he got hurt in that game against Caledonia, um, and then um, Shelby, of course, dealing that ankle um, recovering from that ACL injury in November. So. I think when you look at North Farmington, it's the defensive side of the ball that was my biggest concern. But they held Troy to not, to they shut Troy out. Um, but when I look at Troy here in their case here, I've got I've been really disappointed in their offense. I mean, yes, they got a sophomore quarterback. I think Parker Brandenburg is their starter. 
Um, they got a sophomore running back. Um, but still, um, you got to be, if you want to be a team that wants to make the next step, you have to be, um, you got to be more productive on that side. They even moved Darius Whiteside back to wide receiver. And, you know, that didn't, it didn't work out. And, you know, you look at Whiteside, obviously he's in the secondary um, for, for Troy. I mean, like Jalen Jane, Peacock's in that secondary as well. Uh, Troy's defense, I'm not worried about. The problem is the offense. And that is a problem that for coach um, Chris Frazier, he's got to address this problem. I mean, you look at the prior two weeks, prior to that it was 31 points. I mean, they scored, I mean, they had 17 against Detroit Mumford, 14 against Macomb, Lance Cruz North. I mean, yes, it's their home opener. I know they're going to be geeked up. They're going to be excited to play that game um, this week against Ferndale. Um, but I don't think Fern, Ferndale's not an easy game for Troy. And I'll preview that game in a little bit. But for me, when it comes to Troy, the biggest concern I have with them, seriously, is on the offensive side of the football. So... When I look at this division right now, you know, Seaholm right now sits at 3-0. and Yeah, Farmington at 2-1. and Troy Athens is 2-1. and North Farmington's 1-2. and And Troy is 2-1. and So, kind of really, there's a lot of balance in this division. There is a lot of um, a parity in this division. But when I look at who I think is the best team in this division right now, it's no doubt. To me, at Seaholm. And Seaholm pretty much, you know, I mean, Seaholm led, of course, by the Kinney brothers. They're the real deal. I mean, they're the reason why Seaholm is off to the start. And it's because of the fact that you had the Kinneys, you had the, um, I think with them, um, with Seaholm, they could lead Seaholm a long way. I mean, yes, the schedule is interesting. They still got to play Groves to close out the year. Um, but when I look at the Maples right now, this is a team that's rolling. They're rolling right now. They're red hot. Um, I just think Seaholm at the end of the day here, um, clearly is the best team in this division now. People are going to say, well, Farmington, yeah, Farmington's got a case. I mean, obviously they got the best quarterback in Dominic Peschel. Um, and, you know, they've managed to bounce back since that loss to Ipsen and Lincoln. I mean, so Farmington's another one to keep an eye on. Troy Athens, there's just some questions, especially after that loss to Farmington, um, to really watch for. Um, and then you got Troy, of course. With Troy, I just don't trust them offensively with the way they've been playing. I mean, defensively, they've been solid. I mean, they've been really good defensively. I mean, and then North Farmington, obviously, with the injuries to the two quarterbacks. Um I am very curious to see how their defense responds. Um, it's a big one looming over there um, with the Farmington Cup. We're going to preview that one here. That's one of my top five games I'm really keeping an eye on this week is that Farmington Cup game between um, Farmington and North Farmington. Um, so when I look at this division, I mean, T. is clearly the best team. I mean, bottom line. Clearly the bottom line. Um, let's go from the blue now to the white here. Um, when we look at the white and, you know, with the games that happened this week, um, Rochester beating Bloomfield Hills 41-20. Um, and then you look at Southfield Arts and Tech going up down the Harper Woods and winning 35-21 in a really um, interesting game there. And then, of course, you had um, Groves beating Oak Park 23-18. Um when when I recap those three games, um, the Groves Oak Park game, I'm gonna talk first. Um, Groves, we know, has found the running game. I mean, we saw them what they did against Oxford. They absolutely had a big game running to all against them. Um, Oak Park on the flip side, um, you know, they got a great running game themselves, and they're now boom. They got a really good. Running game with Darnell Boone. Um, I really think the Knights played. Um, they played well. I mean, like, yes, the 18 points. You know what I mean? They scored. Um, you know, that was 
I mean, like, they they didn't score a point last week against them. Um, not two weeks ago against UD Jesuit. They scored 15 against Lake Orion and then 18 against um, um, Groves. And, you know, I, to me, Oak Park is in a process. I mean, they're right there. They're right there. I mean, I mean, like, they are, I mean, like, they've gotten their, um, they're improving each week offensively. Um, curious to see how they do against Harper Woods. This is, that's going to be a really interesting game. To watch over there at Harper Woods, um, but I, I think with Oak Park, um, I think that they, I think the Knights are starting to turn things around, and we know under Coach Greg Carter team that they like to turn things around real quick. So for me, for Oak Park, it's just continuing the process, continuing the process. Um, and then on Groves' side, of course, yeah, you're sitting two and one. Um, you knocked off a good North Farmington team. You've knocked off um, a a good Oak Park team. I mean, now you look at, you're gaining confidence. You're going home, taking on a Blue Bay Hills team next week, which is going to be really interesting. Um, so when I look at Groves, I mean, yeah, you got Kane Hardy at quarterback, um, but I'm wondering where Zach Rogers is. Um, <laughs> so I'm curious to see where Groves goes from here. They've got to up that passing game. Um, but when I look at Groves, I think they're going to be fine. If they can keep continuing the momentum that they have um, going forward, I think they could surprise some people. Um, and then you look, and then let's look at Rochester, Bloomfield Hills. Um, when I look at this game, and with Bloomfield Hills, they're 0-3. They don't have a lot of depth. Um, CJ Jackson's doing everything he could. Um, and to me, that's the problem. I mean, when you don't have a lot of depth, this is what happens. Um, you look at, of course, West Blue. I mean, you look at, of course, Blue Hills. They they give up a ton of points. That is an issue. I mean, last two weeks they given up forty over forty points. That's not good. Um, and you look at this team here. Of course, um, you know they they did put up twenty points, which is um. Which is okay, but in it's it's totally different from being in the in the um in the um in the white from being in the blue, and you know, and I think you look at what's going on Blue Bay Hills. I mean, they're experiencing it right now. They are really experiencing what is going on right now. The fact that you know, maybe just maybe I don't I didn't I don't know if they were ready for this. I don't know if they were ready for the fact that they were. You know, that, you know, last season they went undefeated. Um, then they ran a no by Detroit Catholic Central. I mean, they've lost four straight since that game. Um, you know, so it's so for if you're Coach Dan Loria, you know, you're they're, they're having a really tough time right now. Blue Bay Hills is having a really, really, really tough time right now. Adjusting to life in the white, playing against better competition. And, you know, and the numbers don't lie. You know, the numbers really don't lie, especially on the offensive side of the ball. And then the defense has given up a bunch of points. I mean, in each of the last three games, they've given up over 35 points this season. That's not good. That's not winning football. So if you're Boompy Hills, you got to turn this around quick. If you want to turn around quick, you're going to have to start digging in and stepping up. And that, and right now, I don't know if I see Coach Dan Loria's team really doing that right now. And I think to me, that is a big, big problem right now. When I look at Blue Bill Hills, um, that is a big, big problem. Um, on the flip side, you got Rochester. Um, Rochester has been a hard team to, to describe right now. And I'm going to be flat out honest with you. The Utica game, they should not have lost that game. I really felt like, you know, Rochester, they controlled the game and that they controlled it. Um, and then they lost that game on the last play of the last play of scrimmage. They lost that game. And and then when they played Adams, they got absolutely crushed. I mean, yeah, 34 18, but you know, that game was well over before probably halftime. Um, where Adams ended up they were the better team in that game. But I gotta give 
Um, Alex Bueno, I got to give Grant Cogano, um, Jaden Bolden, a lot of credit. They did not back down in this game against Bloopy Hills. Um, they put up some really gaudy numbers against them. Um, Bueno had a nice game. Um, so it looks like Rochester's starting to turn things around a little bit. Now, they got a big one looming with A&T coming up, and that's going to be a really interesting game to really watch for. Um, so when I look at this, when I look at this game here, I, I just think it's going to be, it's going to be interesting, but Rochester right now, the way that they're playing, um, I really think that, um, who knows, maybe that win against Blue Hills, that could turn things around a little bit. And I think that's a big deal for them. Um, so we'll see, we will see what happens there in that one. Um, and then there's Southfield Artisan Tech taking on Harper Woods, um, this was a 35-21 win for a and over at Harper Woods. Um, it was Harper Woods' first home game as a league member of the OAA. Um, albeit taking on Southfield Arson Tech, that's not an easy matchup. Um, for Harper Woods' case, um, they sit 1-2. and two, um, Lost to two really good teams in um, West Bloomfield and Southfield Arson Tech. Their only other one was a forfeit against... Harper Woods, Chandler Park Academy. Um, when I look at Harper Woods, um, you know, defensively 35 points is a little too much. And if you're Coach Rob Olden, it's just going through the process. You know, you got a good team around you. You got a good, you got talent. Um, but, you know, there's also, you know, there's a difference from playing um, an independent schedule like they've been. And then previous, prior to that, they were in the Michigan Metro Athletic Conference. And then compare that and playing in the OAA when you're going against teams like, you know, you're going against a lot of, going against everybody in, o in Oakland County. Um, it's not easy. It's not easy. If you coach Rob Olden, um, I, I know what you're going through. I mean, it is, it's, it's a process. It's a difficult process. But I've got confidence in that program that they can get this thing fixed. And I think Harper Woods can get this thing fixed and turn things around quickly. So, you know, it's kind of expected if they would have started off one and two, um, going against those two very good teams in West Bloomfield and um, Salford Arson Tech. <laughs> but now you got to play, and you still got to play Adams later in the year, and that's going to be a very daunting task for Coach Rob Olden and his team um, in that one. So if you're Harper Woods, keep playing through the process. Um, that's what I would tell them right now, which is be patient. Everything will work itself out. And then on the flip side, there's A&T. To me, when I look at A&T, I think they're the best. a and I think they're the best team in this division. Um, yes, the 56 points, the high-octane offense. They, they only scored 35. And 35 is a pretty nice number. Um, but the biggest improvement I really felt was their defense. Um, <laughs> comparing the previous two weeks against um, Detroit Cast Tech and Clarkston, where they allowed um, 54 and 62 respectively, um, I think a I think A and T starting to figure some things out defensively a little bit. Now, do I think it's their defense perfect? Absolutely not. I mean, they still got problems. I mean, they gave up, they gave up a couple run passes for run runs for touchdowns against Harper Woods. Um, I think you know, and I think that comes down to um, you know figuring some things out. But A and T is starting to make some pro progress a little bit on the defense side of the football. Um, just improving on their defense um, that is a big deal for them, and. You know, you got, and I know they've heard it all week. I know Coach Aaron Marshall's heard it all week about their defense, you know, giving up a ton of points. Um, you know, you got that offense that's really high octane, you know, playing really good offensively. Um, that's something that you have to improve on, and I think a and T's really improved on that. Um, so... When I look at A&T right now, to me, it's clearly in the white division right now. They are the best team in this division because of the talent pool they have there. Um, Isaiah Marshall's had a really nice um, start to his um, 
a junior year, especially what um, he's been doing. Um, I think A and T right now with the way that they they're at, even though they sit two and one, um, it is clear to me that A and T is the best team in this in in that division. So curious to see what happens, but A and T right now they're rolling right now. So we'll see what happens going forward there. And then let's talk the red. Um, obviously when you look at the red, um, you know Stony Creek, West Bloomfield, you had Lake Orion, Oxford, then. Adams and Clarkston. Um, I'm going to look at West Bloomfield, Stony Creek first. Um, you know, Samaj Morgan had a nice game. He had two touchdowns, um, including a um, a um, pick six for a touchdown. Um, I know Kenny Jones, he had a 90-yard 90 um, yard run for a touchdown. And then he had, um, you know, Raekwon Nance had a nice game as well. Um, 42 third. 42-23 was the final in that game over at Stony Creek. It was the Dutton Farms game um, for Stony Creek. They were wearing special uniforms honoring Dutton Farms. Um, you know, I would look, I would like to get have a nice drink of milk right now. Um, um, but um, but with Stony Creek, you know, you kind of knew this was coming because you know, when you look at the two games prior to playing against them, Bloomfield Hills and then Detroit Mumford, you only allowed seven points. Um, you knew that was going to change against West Bluefield. I mean, you knew that West Bluefield was a far different animal compared to playing against Detroit Mumford and, um, and, um, Bloomfield Hills. And, you know, you got to look at, you know, I know coach Gary Griffin's defense, I mean, really was, um, it was going to be tough against West Bluefield. It's going to be really, really difficult. I mean, like, and. You know, and allowing 42 points, you know what I mean? That's, it was going to be tough. I mean, it was going to be very, very difficult. I mean, West Bloomfield is a totally different animal right now, the way they're playing. Um, Samaj Morgan's having a really nice start to his senior year. Kenny Jones has been playing outstanding. Um, Raekwon Nance has had a nice start. Um, the line has been solid for West Bloomfield. I mean, like, really, you know, really, you really look at West Bloomfield right now, they're, on a mission right now. And if this team can keep their discipline in check, then I think they're going to be really dangerous going forward. Now on the bright side for Stony Creek, the 23 points, you know, they scored 23 points. So, you know, so the Cougars to meet their scoring points, which is a good sign for them. Um, so when you look at it, 23 against West Bloomfield, that is, that says a lot. Um, but they did fight in that game, and, you know, you got to give um, Stony Creek some credit in that game, even though the score looks like it says 42-23 on there, um, which it did. But um, but you got to give them credit, and, you know, Stony Creek, I think, will be fine going forward. Um, West Bloomfield, we know they're on a mission. Um, we're going to talk their big game, Lumen with Clarkston, um, in, a, in a couple minutes here, so... I think it's going to be really interesting to see where West Bloomfield's at as a team um, going forward. So right now they're rolling right now. Um, and then you have, um, we have the um, Clarkston Rochester Adams game. Um, that was on Valley Sports Detroit. Um, just surprised what the scoring, what the score read 45, 35. Um, and then the halftime score was 42 to 28 at halftime. Um, that's insane. Um, pretty much there were a couple insane moments in this one. Um, Adams' defense had a lot of issues stopping, um, the combo of Mike Hine, Ethan Clark, and Cole Jarvis. Um, Ethan Clark was the main catalyst in that game. He had a big, um, he had a Moss game. I think he had over 400 yards of total offense in that game, which is absolutely insane. Um, especially considering how good Adams' defense is. Um, Mike Hine started the scoring on the first play, um, going 80 yards for a touchdown. Um, it just was that simple. Um, Clark just simply wore Adams out. I mean, that's really what happened. I mean, yes, Parker Pico had a nice game against Clarkson. I mean, I still think Clarkson's defense is, their Clarkson's defense is not, I mean, yeah, they allowed seven points the second half, but I don't think their defense is as good. Um, I really think, you know, Clarkson really wore Adams down. And that was the difference. 
And if you're Adams, you know what I mean? That's is going to be your biggest problem all year is you're going to see teams that are going to try to wear you down. And, you know, and Ad, I mean, like, and it happened against Belleville. It happened against Clarkston. Um, when teams, you know, when teams are big, you know, going against Adams, you know what I mean? You have a lot of guys that go two ways, particularly your skill guys. You know, you're going to have, there's going to be issues of, you know, of, um, of conditioning. And, you know, it happens to every, every team. And Adams is one of those teams. So Parker Pico had a nice game there. Um, Logan Patera. I'm curious to see where Nick Patera. Um, curious to see how Adams does against Lake Orion. That's going to be a really interesting game there over at Lake Orion on Friday night. That's going to be really interesting. Um, Clarkson, they got a big one looming West Bluefield. I'm curious to see where that one goes. But clearly when I look at that game from last week, the difference was Clarkson wore out Adams. And that was really the bottom line was Clarkson really wore them down. They, they wore Adams down. They, you know, and that was, that was it. That was your ball game. And then you look at Lake Orion and Oxford. Um, this one here was a 28-10 Lake Orion win over Oxford. Um, and I really think the difference in that game was, was when Oxford took the lead 10-7 in the third quarter on a, um, they scored, Eli Tower had a, um, I think he went on a 58-yard, um, toss for a touchdown, which gave Oxford a 10-7 lead. And then Lake Orion decided, okay, that's it. We're going to wake up here. And that they did. Um, predominantly thanks to the play of um, Tristan Hill, who has really been, who's really blossomed the last two weeks as a starter. Um, Billy Roberson has it's been really, been playing really good. Darren Jones, um, I watched the OCTV broadcast about it. I still can't believe that they um, didn't know his name. Um, you know, they call him the unnamed soldier. Um, but I thought Darren Jones had a really nice game there um, for Lake Orion. Um and I thought Lake Orion's offensive line played really well in that game. I really did. Um, gave holes, big time holes. Um, and then the Lake Orion defense. Um, you know, I've been so hard on this defense, but look at them the last two weeks. I mean, you know, in the first game of Cedar Eisenhower, they allowed, um, yeah, the 34 points, you know what I mean? But technically, the offense allowed, um, technically, you know, and the 34 points they allowed against Eagle Eisenhower, um, the defense was responsible, I would say, for about 21 of those. Um, then they gave the two pick sixes for touchdowns in that game. Um, but the last two weeks, Lake Orion has only allowed a total of 25 points. That's not bad. But, you know, it, their defense will be tested this week against Adams. I mean, for sure. Um but when you look at Lake Orion right now, they're starting to they're they're playing exactly what they're supposed to be like right now. Um, and right now, you know, they sit two and one, really nice spot right now. And then you look at Oxford on the flip side, you know, yes, you got a young team. You got Dominic Cassisi quarterback, Logan Robertson. I mean, Logan R- Logan Robertson. I thought he had a really nice game. Logan Johnson, my bad. Um, he had a nice game. Um, I mean, like Eli Tabbert had a nice game. Um, Cameron Jarrett, he had an okay game. Um, but when I look at Oxford, they're going to have to win games with low-scoring games. I mean, like, I don't know if their offense is built, you know, to go to a high-scoring game. You know what I mean? Like, wasn't like last year. I mean, like, for them. So when I look at Oxford, you're going to have to grit and grind every night, you know. And I think that's just, that's the thing that Oxford's going to have to do from from here on out is grit and grind, you know, I mean, win those tough games. I mean, like, that's not an easy thing to do. And, yes, they got a very young lineup. I mean, the majority of their team, they got a lot of sophomores on that team. But, you know, for them, that is their MO right now for Coach Zach Line is you have to win games on the ground. I mean, like, grit, you, you hit your defense. I thought Oxford's defense looked good most, most of the game against Lake Orion. I really did. I mean, like, even their game against Groves, I thought Oxford's defense looked pretty good. I mean, so, but when I look at Oxford right now, offensively, you know, I mean, like Dom Cassisi looks to be the guy at quarterback. Um, you know, they got a three-headed monster. Um, 
the receivers have to really step up. Um, so when you look at Oxford, um, they're young, but they're going to have to step up. You know what I mean? Sometimes young pups have to grow up. You know what I mean? And, you know, and I feel that for Oxford, you know, that's where it's got to be at. Um, so we'll see what happens with the Wildcats. I think they're fine. There's no need to panic if you're in Oxford right now. So we'll see what happens going forward. Um, let's preview the games now. Obviously, week three here. Um, week four, actually. Um, so there's some interesting games to keep an eye on. Um, we got Pontiac at Royal Oak this week. Um, when I look at this game here on paper, um, yes, these are two teams that are 0-3. Um, Pontiac, you know, they're coming off a 48-28 loss to Berkeley last week. Um, Royal Oak... They're 0 and 3, but they're coming off a 22 21 loss to Ferndale. So when I look at this game on paper, you know, people would say, well, Royal Oak, yes, they're in Division, they're Division One, they're Division Two team. Pontiac's in Division Three. Um, this should be a blowout. I don't necessarily think it's going to be because when I talked to Coach Doug Corliss a couple weeks ago, um, he said to me that this could be a barn burner. And I think this would be a barn burner um, because, you know, Royal Oak traditionally has been really, has been, traditionally has been really bad. Pontiac, we know they've been struggling. I think this is a close game, but I think Coach Justin True gets his first win of the year. I, I just think that, you know, Royal Oak, with everything they have, um, obviously Makai Jenkins, Hudson Seidel, their line is solid, of course, led by Ellie Finch. Um, this is going to be a close game with Pontiac, but I just think Royal Oaks got enough here in the table, and I think they're going to win that game over Pontiac. So I think Coach Justin True gets his first win. Um, Pontiac, unfortunately, you know, you know, I I, I really think Week Nine against Garden City, I think is the best chance where I think they get they get their first win of the year. But it wouldn't surprise anybody if Pontiac did go into Royal Oak and upset them. That would be a stunner. Um, but Pontiac's got the state's longest losing streak. So I'm hoping that streak gets snapped somehow. Um, but I don't know if I see it happening this week, um, in that game. Um, Berkeley and Avondale. Could this be the gold title game? Maybe. I mean, like I thought early on in the year, both these two teams I thought would be better, but it looks like they have not. I mean, like, Avondale's lost two straight since their win against Warren Cousineau. Berkeley had lost two straight prior to beating Pontiac last week. Um, so when I look at this game here on paper, and, you know, and I think athletically it does favor, um, athletically it does give Avondale an edge. Um, I mean, like, I'm curious to see how the quarterback situation is over there. Um, Adam at Berkeley, of course, um, they, Avondale, they got a very good quarterback in Tyler Herzog. Um, for me with Avondale, it comes down to is, can they move the line of scrimmage and can they score with Berkeley? I, I, and on Berkeley's side of things, they've got to develop a passing game. You know, Avondale is a much more athletic team than Pontiac is. I think this has got a capability of being a high scoring game. I think this is going to be a very good game um, over at Dick Byfield. Field. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see who pans out and wins this game. I think Avondale has enough. Being at home, um, I, I just don't know if I could trust Berkeley with their quarterback situation right now. Um, as, it, as it is right now, I, I just don't know if I could trust Trust Berkeley right now, especially on the defensive side and the quarterback situation. That is a big question there. If they can overcome their exorcisms, if they can overcome that, I think Berkeley has a shot to win this game. But Avondale, to me, when I look at them, I just think being at home is going to help them. Um, and also last week, they gave up 63 points to see home. That's not that's not a Corey Bell type team. I know he had to be very upset, very disappointed last week in the defensive effort. Um, 
And I think Avondale's due for a bounce back game. I really think they're going to be due for a bounce back game. So we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I think I like Avondale in that game. It'll be a good game. It'll be tight. I think it's going to be, it could be a, it could be a shootout. So we'll see what happens going forward in that one. Um, you got Ferndale and Troy. This will be it played at Troy. Um, when I look at this game here on paper, people are going to ask me, Troy should win this game with ease. I don't think so. I don't trust Troy offensively. The way Troy played in that game against North Farmington, North Farmington really shut down Troy's offense. Troy's offense has only scored 33 points. That is not good. And then you look at the teams that they played, Detroit Mumford and Macomb Lance Cruz North, not, not necessarily the greatest competition. Whereas on the flip side, you have North Farmington. On the, on the flip side with Ferndale, they, they played Grand Rapids West Catholic. That is a brutal, they're very good. Um, Macomb Lance Cruz. They are a good team. And then you look at, and then, of course, they knocked off Royal Oak last week. So when I'm looking at strength of schedule component, that clearly favors Ferndale. Um, yes, Troy's got a very good player in Darius Whiteside. They have Jalen Peacock. They have a very good kicker and good punter as well, and Zach Pinoza. But I think if Kyle Brandenburg, Brandenburg's the key. If he plays well in this game, I think Troy's got a chance. But if he doesn't, don't be surprised with Ferndale's experience that they go in there and upset Troy. I'm calling for the upset this week. I, I really think that's going to happen. Um, I, I just don't know if I could trust Troy on an offensive side of the ball unless you move Darius Whiteside to play wide receiver. Um, which they've done on a couple of occasions. Um, but I just don't know if I trust Troy right now offensively, considering the problems they've been having right now on that side of the ball. Um, let's go now to the um, to see home and Troy Athens. This has the makings of a very interesting game in the Maple Forest. Um, but I was very disappointed with Troy Athens last week in their game against Farmington. Um, they didn't play very well against them in that game. Um, Seaholm, we know they're clicking on all cylinders. They're rolling. Um, I just think, you know, the Kinney brothers, the way that they're playing. Um, I know Troy Athens, they got, they got both Asher brothers. Um, they got, um, Robinson there. Um, I just think that the difference is going to be is Seaholm's experience with the beer. Um, it's at the Maple Forest. I think the Maples roll in this game over Troy Athens. Um, I don't think it's going to be that close. So we'll see how that, how that game goes. Um, next is the Farmington Cup. We got North Farmington at Farmington. This is Farmington's best chance to get the Farmington Cup. They got experience. They got, I mean, like they're at home. I know Farmington TV 10 is going to be very excited, very geeked up for this game. North Farmington, we don't know the quarterback situation yet. Um, will they go with Coleman, um, the third-string the third string quarterback, um, or will they move him back to his original position on the offense? Will Ryan Shelby come back? Will, um, will, um, that is the big question. There's a lot of questions surrounding Coach John Herstein's team. There's a lot of questions. So when I look at this game and, you know, Farmington is 0-3 against Coach John Hurstein. Um, now, when you look at the lead teams at North Farmington, so I think in this game here, if Farmington wants to win this game, they have to be the dominant team up front. They have the experience. They have the proven playmakers. You have the quarterback and Dominic Peschel. Everything looks right for you to win this game. But I don't know. I think it's going to be a tight game. I think it's going to be a close game. I think Farmington does get it done, but it's a closer head of their chinny chin chins, like a 27 24 game. I, I think that will be, I mean, like, but if North Farmington gets any of those key players back, especially a quarterback, if it's Ryan Shelby, I would have gave the edge to North Farmington. But 
If he's back, North Farmington wins this game. If not, I got to give the edge to Farmington. Um, I just think the Falcons too much in this game. Um, you know, I, I just don't. The Raiders are not a deep team either, so that's something to really watch for. Um, I'll be curious to see what happens in that game. So, but I know Farmington TV ten. They're going to be really excited, as mentioned. Um, you know, so that'll be a big, big game over there at Farmington. I know it's expected to be a packed house. Of course, I know North Farmington brings a lot of fans. Farmington's going to have a lot of fans as well. So, so Farmington TV ten. You know, I mean, if you can't make it that game, that's the area to go to to watch that game is Farmington TV ten. Um, and then let's go to the white. Um, you got um Groves taking on on Bloomfield Hills. This is an interesting game. Um, I really think the way Groves is playing right now. I trust them right now more and more each day. Um, I just think the running attacks been pretty good. They're, they're, um, you know, everything for them has been clicking at all cylinders. Um, I, I, th I think Groves, you know, they got a good running attack. Caden Hardy's been playing good. Bloomby Hills, I don't know if I could trust them right now um, defensively. Yes, they got C.J. Jackson at quarterback. Um, do I? I don't know if I expect them to pose any problems, particularly um, in that game against a um, a Groves team that is just absolutely rolling right now. Now, I don't trust Groves' defense. That's a big one I don't trust right now. But we'll see how that one goes. I do like Groves in that game though against Blue Bay Hills being at home. I think their lines better. Um, I think they're improved. Um, so we'll see what happens in that game. I think it'll be very interesting to see what happens there in that one. Um, Oak, Harper, Oak Park at Harper Woods. This is an interesting game. Um, I really think when you look at Harper Woods, they got the athleticism. They got the playmakers. I think it comes down to discipline. Um, whoever is the least penalized team, the least disciplined team, I would say right now would win this game. And I think to me right now, I would trust Harper Woods right now in that situation because the Pioneers, yes, it's the home game for them. It's on grass. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see what happens there in that game. Oak Park, you know, they're getting better offensively. Um, I think that I expect them to keep getting better offensively. Um, defensively, I think it's going to be the test. Um, to see where they're at. They were much better last week against Groves than they were against Lake Orion. Um, so I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens in that one. I'm going to take um, Harper Woods in that one. Um, it'll be a close game. I expect it'll be a really close game between the Pioneers and Knights. So we'll see what happens in that one. Um, then there's Rochester at Southfield Arts and Tech. Um, I expect this one to be a shootout because both teams can score. Both teams have high-octane offenses. A&T, we know about their offense. Rochester's the one we don't know much about. Now, what helps them is Alex, you got Alex Bueno, you got Grant Cogano, and Jalen Bolden. I expect those three to have big games in this one. Don't be surprised this game is probably in the high 50s to low 40s game. I mean, don't be surprised there. I still don't trust A&T's defense. Um, and then I look at... Um, Rochester, you know, I, I can't trust their defense in that one either. Um, so neither team, I think defense is optional in that game, but I'm going to take A&T because they're at home. Um, I think they're going to roll in this game. Um, it'll be close, though. I, I I think it'll be high high 50s, low 40s type of game. So that'll be very interesting to see what happens there in that one. Um, let's go now from the white to the red. We got, it's Oxford's homecoming this week. Oxford taking on Stony Creek. Um, Oxford, we know they're a young team. They're going to have to battle it out. They're going to have to grit it out. Um, you know, they got a lot of grit, you know, and Stony Creek's coming off a tough loss last week to West Bluefield. Um, when I look at this game on paper, um, Stony Creek, we know, is a defense-first team. Um, I expect both defenses will rise to the occasion this game. And shut down both offenses. I know Stony Creek's got a little bit of a better offense because of John Fogler. Um, I think Fogler does just enough in this game for Stony Creek. Um, I expect this maybe be a 13-10 game. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's going to be 
really close throughout the end. I, I, I really think Stony Creek does win this game at Oxford. Um, it's going to be a close one, though, but I really think too much firepower with Stony Creek um, will be the difference. It'll be a really gritty game. It'll be really barn brooding. It'll be a good game. I think it'll be a really good game there in that one. Um, let's go to Lake Orion and Rochester Adams. Um, first time these two teams have met since 2019. I remember that one real well when Lake Orion won 36-31 on that Saturday night. Um, Parker Picot was a wide receiver in that, in that game. Um, you look at Adams and they're coming, they're going to be ticked. They're going to be mad. You know, they're coming off a 45-35 loss to Clarkston. You know that they're better. They're they're gonna say, "Well, we're better than what we're showing," but you're going to Lake Orion, and Lake Orion's a tough place to play. I mean, considering you know, and Adams has lost, I think, the last three games to Lake Orion. I mean, and I really look at this game here, and it's gonna be tight. I, I expect this to be a shootout. You know, I will be very curious to see how the Highlanders do against the Lake Orion defense. You know, yes, they're going to run the veer. They're going to run the, they're going to run a lot of, a lot. Of, they're going to run the veer. We know that they got a very physical player in Parker Pico. You got Nick Patera. You got Brady Priest scoring. You got a lot of proven skill players. But when you look at when you look at Adams, it comes down to the point when I said earlier, when Adams played Clarkston, what did Clarkston do to Adams? Wore them down. And what do I see with Lake Orion here? I see. A similar team that can wear te- teams down. Lake Orion against Oxford last week, they wore them down. You know, and I, I think it's going to be a, di- I think it's going to be, it could very well be similar here. I expect it'll be very similar to the 2019 game. I expect it's going to be a shootout. Um, and this is a game where I think Lake Orion needs because you look at the Dragons. You know, there's a plenty of opportunities right there. You know, I mean. You know, if they can get this one, this is a big deal for them. So, when I look at this game, this is going to be a tight one. I like Lake Orion in this one. Because of, they. I think Billy Roberson's going to have a big game here. I think Darren Jones has a big game here. But if Lake Orion can find any sort of passing attack in this game, um, then I think, they, I think they have a good chance here to pull in this one out. And it'll be a tight game. I expect Adams will score a bunch of points. I expect Lake Orion will score a bunch of points. So don't be surprised if it's very similar to the 2019 game last back in 2019. It, don't be surprised. It could be a very high-scoring, high-octane game. I mean, both defenses have been primed to giving up a lot of points. So we'll see what happens in that game. And then the last game here to talk about is Clarkston and, South, and West Bluefield in the Swamp. Second straight year. This is going to be very interesting. Um... Last year was 34-27 in overtime in favor of West Bloomfield. West Bloomfield hasn't really changed much. I mean, yes, Dylan Tatum's gone, but they got a player in Kenny Jones who's been very proven. And then you look at, you got Raekwon Nance there. You got Samaj Morgan. You got, your lines are very good. I mean, then on the flip side, you got Ethan Clark back. You got Mike Hine now taking over at quarterback. You have, um, you obviously have Cole Jarvis at wide receiver. Your Clarkson's defense to me is still very suspect. I mean, even after say, giving up seven points last week against Adams in the second half, I still don't trust that defense one bit. So when I look at this game here on paper, you know, it looks to be a classic. It should be a classic, and I expect it will be a classic. But I just think West Bloomfield being at home, um, I know Clarkson's motivated to get revenge, obviously, but I just think the Lakers being at home, too much. Um, I, I really like the Lakers in this game um, because of I think Kenny Jones has a big game here against Clarkson's defense. I really do. I think he will have a big game here. Um, Kenny Jones, real deal, legit player. I think he's going to be a difference maker in this game. Um, even though people are going to say, well, what about Raekwon Nance? I just think Kenny Jones will have a big game here in this one. Um, so my final thoughts of the week, we'll see what happens going forward. All right, everybody, I'm signing off here. Um, take care, God bless, and I will see you all next week, everybody.